With the i30 family hatchback, Hyundai have surprised all of us, and with a little help from Kia, built their most credible volume car yet. At its original launch in 2007, most agreed that with a more dynamic look, this model would shift some serious numbers in this sector. This revised version aims to deliver just that. Over the last few years, the letter I is one we've had to take increasingly seriously as iPods, iPads and iPhones have increasingly dominated public consciousness. They marked a turning point in the fortunes of the brand that created them, quality products that surpassed consumer expectations, much like this one, Hyundai's i30. At its launch in 2007, this was the most significant car the Korean brand had ever dared to bring us a focus-sized mainstream model that claimed to be more than just something that offered you a lot of metal for the money. Those persuaded to try one were shocked by the way it rode, handled and offered the kind of premium feel previously limited to much pricier brands. But all of that was artfully hidden behind looks that suggested this to be just another unexceptional South Korean also ran. For greater success in the Focus and Astra dominated family hatchback sector, better packaging was required and a minor facelift early in 2010 claimed to have delivered it in the form of the car we're looking at here. Let's check it out. The i30 has been specifically designed for the European market and benchmarked against class leaders like the Volkswagen Golf and the Ford Focus. Like those cars, but unlike a number of other significant contenders in this sector, it has fully independent multi-link rear suspension, which is why it handles a great deal more competently than you might be expecting it to. Okay, thanks perhaps to the slightly vague feel you get from the electric power steering, Lewis Hamilton wannabes will still opt for something like a Focus, and rightly so, but for most buyers most of the time, this Hyundai gives them everything they need and more. What really impresses is not the largely irrelevant poise with which it handles a twisting secondary B road, although that's nice to have, but the supple fluid ride that absorbs everything that the pockmarked British road network can throw at it. Under the bonnet, the entry point into i30 ownership is the 107 brake horsepower 1.4 litre petrol variant, which slots in just below the 127 brake horsepower 1.6 litre petrol model. Perhaps wisely, Hyundai is steered clear of offering anything much more potent than that. Most buyers, instead of worrying about performance, chill out and go for a diesel model, uh, a 1.6 litre diesel model, since that's uh, the only capacity that's available, either with 89 brake horsepower, as in this case, or 113 brake horsepower in its fastest form. Now, despite the Koreans' efforts with variable geometry turbocharging, this isn't the quietest common rail unit that I've ever tried, but it's a willing and tractable engine, capable in its fastest form of getting you from rest to 60 in under 11 seconds, on the way to a top speed of 127 miles an hour, which will be quite enough for most buyers. Though many Europeans may have found the look of the original version of this car to be pretty unremarkable. Clearly, someone at high end rather likes it, for the changes made to this revised version are fairly slight. You've got a restyled front bumper and front grille, and there are tweaks to the side mouldings, and that's about it. Shut the door with its quality thunk, and it's all much more impressive. Though still hardly what you call avant-garde design-wise, the quality of materials and the standard of construction achieved by the Czech factory is convincing. Nice touches include the flashes of chrome around the dash and the blue illumination for the digital displays that also extend on plusher models to the steering wheel controls and the ignition key slot so you won't be fumbling around in the dark. Dim the dashboard illumination and the uh, steering wheel motor controls will dim as well which is a nice touch. Though there's no sliding or reclining function for the back seat, space is reasonably plentiful for rear occupants. Though, as usual in this class of car, fitting three adults across the back here would be a bit of a squash. If you're going to be filling the back seats a lot, it might be uh, wise to consider the estate variant, which has an extra 20 millimeters in its wheelbase and puts that room to good use here. 
As for luggage space, well, the huge boot suggested by this car's bulging rear end isn't actually that enormous, but the 340 litres it offers uh, should be quite adequate for most customers, particularly as, as is possible, you can extend it by folding these rear seats completely flat to free up 1,250 litres of total space. If you need more, there's an estate version on offer with between 415 and 1,395 litres of room. Expect to pay somewhere in the 13 to 17,000 pound bracket for your i30 and allow a model for model premium of around 700 pounds if you want the estate version. So it may not be quite as cheap as you were expecting, but let's be fair about this. Uh, those prices still represent a three to four thousand pounds saving over a comparably equipped Ford Focus or Vauxhall Astra. And even against a Peugeot 308 or a Renault Megane, there's a, a saving of around two thousand pounds. For pricing parity, you've to look to Kia's Seed, which shares uh, much of this car's design and its engine wear. And uh, the Kia is actually a couple of hundred pounds cheaper in most cases, but that's nothing that your friendly high-end dealership won't be able to match. Whether you choose 1.4 or 1.6 litre petrol variants or this 1.6 litre CRDI diesel in either of its guises, you should find your i30 to be reasonably well equipped. Air conditioning, front fog lamps, a reasonable quality stereo with iPod and MP3 interfaces, electric front windows and headlamps that stay on to guide you to your front door. All of those things are standard. Options include an automatic uh, four-speed uh, gearbox. It's a fairly unremarkable unit. You'll find it on the fastest petrol and diesel mainstream variants. You can also specify at a little extra cost the ISG automatic stop start system that cuts the engine at the lights or in traffic jams to save you fuel. Would have been nice to see that as standard. Still, safety wise, it's pleasing to see that unlike some of its rivals, High ND hasn't skimped on the provision of the potentially life saving ESP stability control system on entry level models to help you out if you enter a corner too fast or if you're on a slippery surface. Plus, there are six airbags and anti-whiplash front head restraints to help you out in a rear end collision. Now one of the main reasons people buy high undies is for the long warranties you get that enable you to just lay back and relax over the ownership period. In this case you get a five year triple care package that includes for that duration an unlimited mileage warranty, REC roadside assistance and annual vehicle healthcare checks. Service intervals pitched at 12,500 miles or one year for the petrol models have been extended to 20,000 miles or one year for diesel variants like this one. As for fuel consumption, well, you should expect 46.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle from the 1.4 litre petrol, which returns 143 grams per kilometre of CO2. If you're a budget buyer, you'll want to balance that against the 64.2 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle that you'll get from the 89 brake horsepower CRDI diesel variant. And it's 115 grams per kilometer of CO2. Insurance is uh, between groups 14 and 17 on the one to 50 scale. And depreciation, well, residuals won't be quite as high as some of the mainstream models that this car counts as its competitors. But then you're not paying their kind of prices to start with. I know it doesn't look it, but this really is a landmark car. Hyundai has been producing very credible niche models for years, but this is the first volume contender that is at least the equal of its European rivals on most counts. It's just a pity that despite the styling refresh, you still wouldn't know it from a casual glance. Still, the aesthetics are now more than ever clean and smart, and the value proposition continues to make rival Japanese and European brands look greedy. They, of course, can sometimes throw big discounts at you. Or as an alternative, uh, Kia's comparably priced seed is a broadly similar product. But even against these options, the i30 needs significant inclusion on your shopping list. It's a thoroughly engineered and surprisingly effective family hatchback. Proof, indeed, if proof were needed, that the eyes have it.